So there's something that we haven't talked about much that's coming this year, and that's the Regiments of Renown. Now, we know that we're getting these as it's been told to us, and it's also pretty obvious. And we already have them for the first game, and well, we, we lost the 30th anniversary ones, but by God, if we're not getting them back. So, in a four-part video, maybe, I don't know, you guys let me know, but uh, I want to discuss each race's possible regiments of renown, High Elves, Dark Elves, Lizardmen, and Skaven. Um, after the Tomb Kings come out and we see which legendary legions they get, we'll do one for them. Now, here's how I'm going to do this. Rather than conveying every possible regiment of, renown, regiment of renown per unit, I'm going to suggest what one I either like the most or makes the most sense. For example, there's like 10 other famous quote-unquote knights when it comes to Silver Helms, but obviously we'll probably only get one, if not two. So let's get started, though, as the High Elves have plenty to go through. Now, this is an interesting one because there are so many options here. The, the High Elf Heraldry book that came out to showcase the different color schemes of the various realms shows a few regiments of renown in the back, namely the Revenants of Cain, and they are a spearman unit. So uh, the Revenants of Cain are, uh, just to backtrack there, there would be what I would suggest would be the Regiments of Renown Spearmen. Um, the regiment, the Re Revenants of Cain are pretty interesting because they're depicted as using swords and shields, and this is clearly out of the norm for Spearmen as well, you know, they're Spearmen. Uh, one thing that the High Elf have always really needed, especially in the tabletop, has been a swordsman unit. Their Dark Kin received their bleak swords and it really worked out well for them. The, the Dark Elves were, at the end of 8th edition, um, ranked above the High Elves. But of course, the demons way up there. But whatever. They have this really kind of brutal history too. So as um, some of the last loyal elves from Nagarith, they help to protect the Blighted Isle from the Dark Elves. Now the Blighted Isle is home to the Shrine of Cain, uh, which is these uh, what these warriors worship. And, and that's something we know is very frowned upon by the rest of their kin. So they actually play this huge part in the end times as they're in a number of battles, you know, the defense of the Eternal Glade and the Battle of the Blighted Isles. In fact, in the end times, uh, there's this whole big portion of where a uh, big portion of the history they talk about, hey, well, Malekith's coming and all of these remnants of Cain, because they are more or less militia, but they are militia on the Blighted Isle, come out from hiding to fight against Malekith. And in the defense of the Eternal Glade, it's interesting, they actually have now begrudgingly rallied to um, fight alongside him. So it's a very interesting dichotomy. The end times is, is kind of like a yakety sax playing um, crazy time of weird alliances and allegiances, but... The Revenants of Cain, I could see as maybe this frenzied sword infantry unit with their uh, shields giving them some ranged defense. Now, definitely a bit more of a threat on the battlefield compared to your standard spearmen. Uh, spearmen, them, spearmen themselves have great staying power, but really not much killing. Uh, this would break that mold with an entry-level Regiments of Renown that can really crack open chaff that would otherwise require archery or the other more elite units to help clear out. And you really... You, you can't have spearmen, though, without their trusty archer counterparts, the other arm of the High Elf Militia. So with archers, this is another entry straight from the Heraldry book, but it's honestly one of my favorites just because of the lore attached to them, the Mist Walkers of Ibris. Again, there are plenty of other options for possible regiments of renown for the archer, quote-unquote, class or unit for High Elves, but this is the one that I at least like the most. Now, to go into a bit of background here, Everest is, you know, shrouded in all these mystical and magical mists. Uh, alliteration aside, these mists sometimes hide fell foes indeed, if, if not some sort of Norskin invader. And the mist walkers of Ivris range through Ivris, hunting demons within the mists and, and anyone that would invade the Grey Shores. Now the big difference between the mist walkers and normal archers, aside from their proficiency in hunting demons, is that they're drawn from the nobility rather than the civilians. So you have all these remarkable princes and nobles that came up through the mist walkers. Etherian, Eltherian the Grim, you know, my favorite high elf hero, was actually at one time a Mistwalker of Ibris. So you can see these archers are a bit more elite and regal than their uh, conscripted peers, or I guess their militia peers. So the real question is, how would they translate to Total War Warhammer 2 without being just a budget Sisters of Avalorn? Now, until we get Sisters of Avalorn in the game, it's hard to really speculate on what is, you know, two points of, well, speculation. 
So I'd say that the Mist Walkers of Abris would have the ability to do magic damage with their bows, helping them hit ethereal and demonic targets. It's very lore friendly for them. But maybe even an AP characteristic as I want that so, so bad in the High Elf roster. And it'd be cool if they had maybe some attribute like a immune to psychology to symbolize their otherwise steely resolve. But that might be pushing it for a range unit, you know? So we'll see how that goes. But... Uh, since we're doing the sort of entry-level units and we've covered both the infantry and the ranged, let's move over to our entry cav in the Illyrian Reavers. And you notice I say cav to prevent myself from saying cavalry or cavalry, cavalry being the right way to say it. But we know that Illyrian Reavers come in two flavors, ranged and, well, not ranged. So the real question is, what are the Illyrian Reavers going to be? Now, before we really get into their stats, we can touch on some of the less fleshed out entries going forward. Um, the other two have these these pages, well, not a whole, not multiple pages, but there's a whole block page dedicated to them with a nice little lore blurb. But the Heralds of the Wind hail from Illyrian, as the rest of their kind do. But the lore has that they are a very fast and timely quick attack unit, so they're kind of always appearing exactly where they need to be at the most opportune moment. Now, going back to the flavor of the Reavers, you know, um, how could we see this playing out? Well, let's say that they're a, me they, they are a uh, melee variant. I could see them being a lot tougher than normal Reavers. If we look at things like the, Red the Norsekin Regiments of Renown, we see the Ice Wolves as having a lot more staying power. You know, the Regiments of Renown Ice Wolves go from being just a fast attack skirmishing unit to one that can actually trade almost evenly with Knights of the Realm. So that's what I think we'd be looking at at a much faster, much stockier version of the melee reavers. Now, if we're talking ranged, I think that they're that they'll just have an increased firing rate or, or maybe a slightly increased weapon damage on their range. I don't think they'll have anything crazy like special shots or anything of the sort really. Illyrian reavers don't necessarily roll that way, but you know, it, it's kind of a who's who of what they do. They, they typically kind of choose things that are way out of the norm or, or things that we didn't expect. And it's really cool when they do that. I mean, obviously it's it's badass and you know, get these really cool regiments of renown that have all these kind of cool skins, custom skins or flavors. And I mean, I never see them coming. I'm like, oh yeah, cool choice CA, like that one. <laughs> but uh, we, as, as we round off the entry level units and start to get into the higher tiers, we can't leave one of my favorite units behind, Lothern Seaguard. Now, we're starting to run out of the units from the Heraldry book, and as a result, we're going to have to get into some of the units that were introduced in the end times. Uh, the unfortunate thing is that they might be totally missed out on since the timeline hasn't included them yet. The nice thing about elves, though, is that they're really old, so there's not, there's no telling if they're just add these units in, add these units in as a nod as uh, how they've been around for damn near forever, in Warhammer time at least. So the Storm Riders are a unit of Lothern Seaguard that hail from Lothern, but are known for their dangerous boarding actions and these kind of legendary patrols of the seas around Ulthuan. And uh, the Storm Riders shields are, have really um, slotted in, in later editions, as the go-to shield of the Lothern Seaguard. They've got this giant um, on the front, and it's uh, this giant um, uh, worm. It's Aminar, and he's he is the uh, great worm that sleeps deep under the Emerald Gate of Lothern, uh, protecting the entrance to the city. He's a mare worm. This is what it's called. But since the Lothern Sea Guard are such a strong unit on their own, it's hard to say how they're going to work as a regiment of renown. Maybe since they're famed for fighting in ship-to-ship -ship engagements, they'll have two weapons rather than a spear, giving them an anti-infantry characteristic as they're used to kind of squaring off against their favored foe, the Black Ark Corsairs. Uh, but what would be interesting is if they maybe even had longbows, so even more range. You could maybe even argue for a sundering armor, but I really worry about how strong that would be. You know, granted it's just a single unit, so it can't be that OP, right? I mean, the Rusty R is completely useless, huh? Ugh. Either way, we'll, we'll skip on over to a unit that really needs some love, in my opinion. The Silverhelms, and, and they, they are in a really weird spot in the meta. Uh, they go from no one using them to them having a ton of viable builds to not. It's very weird, but but I really love them. I mean, my army in tabletop consisted of one big unit of silver helms that, with my lord in it, all, all decked out to the nines. It was my favorite block of my time, my um, high elf army. But there are a lot of specialty silver helm units. All of them knights hailing from different parts of Ulthuan. So 
I went with the Knights of Tor Aelin, as they play a special part in Tyrion's history. Uh, Tor Aelin is the is in the far northeastern region of Gothic, where Tyrion personally trained. And Tyrion actually was was born and raised. Well, kind of born and raised, but he came up in Gothic, and uh, he trained personally with the Knights. He trained them himself, and he also trained in them. Um, in addition, he he actually came up through the Knightly Order, so he he learned greatly. Uh, but also. Uh, he saved the entire Brotherhood from this this dramatic Corsair attack under Drain Brackblood, which is the least Dark Elf name I could think of. But the stats on the Silver Helms are pretty considerable when it comes to anti-infantry. But I'd love to see an AP characteristic slapped onto them with a real nifty paint job. I mean, flaming attacks would also be cool, but I'm not sure of any Silver Helm knightly Brotherhoods that are known for striding through the forests, screaming with their lances on fire. No... Like, pun intended on that, but um, I, I just don't see a, a ton of crazy stuff happening from a Silver Helms unit. Uh, maybe something bla bla like the, the low, like Lothern, um, not Lothern, but the, the, the forest, I can't, Avalorn Silver Helms or something like that. And maybe they've got some sort of uh, benefit for fighting in trees, or, or I'm not sure. Like, it'd be great if they had like white lion Silver Helms and they're all lions. We'll get to that. Trust me, we'll get to that. But since we're on the subject of fire and lances, though, we'll, we'll, we'll jump over to. Uh, you know, another unit that's going to be totally in line with that. You guessed it, the Dragon Princes. So we can touch on my favorite cav unit in the entire game, really, with the Dragon Princes. Or as a Regiment of Renown unit is called the Fireborn. Now, back in the day, I think it was 4th edition to be exact, Dragon Princes used to not be colored blue and white. Instead, they were colored red and gold. And it's a very stark contrast to an army almost entirely covered in blue and white. So I really miss those old colors. Even the dragon princes that hail from Kalidor are not the blue and white we typically see, but actually a predominantly green color. So there are a lot of varieties for their armor. And the Fireburn, the Fireborn, were Prince Emric's personal bodyguard. And we did talk about Prince Emric here as the, uh, the current Prince of Kalidor, but really there, there are any ruling Prince of Kalidor's personal bodyguard. And on their shield was the likeness of Androgneer, you know, the mighty dragon we've talked about, that Anarian road during the Great Catastrophe. You know, the badass dragon that single-handedly killed greater demons. Now, <clears throat> I want them to have flaming attacks, so that's what they're going to have. I mean, since this is a video about conjecture, I'm making the damn rules. And I always thought that them not having AP was really kind of weird, but maybe they'll have an anti-large characteristic or just a souped up version of martial mas mastery that in, that uh, kind of imbues martial mastery and an aura around them. You know, we saw that with the Regiments of Renown, Wood Elf Treekin, giving an aura of fire resistance. So maybe we'll get some more aura-based Regiments of Renown here for the High Elves or any of the other New World, or you know, I guess New World factions that we see here. And since we're talking so heavily about Kalidor and, and Imric, no less, I think that a really solid choice for the Regiments of Renown is a beast in that category. Now, we could get into something that uh, something like uh, Caradrian's Phoenix, but uh, that, that'll be down the road. That, that'll be road, down the road, maybe. Who knows? Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Instead, we'll talk about uh, Menathnir, the mighty dragon of Prince Imric of Kalidor. Now, there's no lore of the two fighting separately. So they could just as well make up a different dragon, but since I like to deliver lore to y'all, we'll talk about this big badass. Now we've talked briefly about dragons, but they're keenly intelligent and don't simply listen to their masters. You know, they more select their companions at their own will, and they kind of make a bond in, a, in like a, a, almost like a brotherhood through that. And this is the case for Imric and the mighty Menathnir. Imric was uh, kind of doubled over, you know, getting shanked multiple times by Nagarothi raiding party when uh, Menathnir arose from his slumber and he flew from the mountain that lay above the Amani foothills. And that's where uh, uh, Imric was getting, you know, prison shanked, one, two, three, cell block C. Uh, and Menathnir kind of swept up the entire raiding party, party in this giant torrent of flame. And from there, he saved Imric's life by, by bringing him to Tor Kaleda, a keep within the region of Kalidor. It's actually on the map, right, um, whenever you play Total War Warhammer 2. And there, the two cemented their bond with the first telling of dragon on high elf relationships. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That didn't happen at all. <laughs> but seriously, their bond was was thick as blood ever since. In, in the tabletop, Menathnir actually goes into a frenzy if Emric is killed. So they're quite close. So I could look at Menathnir as a possible 
regiment of renown, moon dragon or star dragon. I think that would be pretty awesome. And with that being said, maybe we'd just see a frenzied dragon, maybe with some added benefit to maybe their attacks or melee. It's really hard to imagine how they would do this, as it would this would be the first dragon outside of the Norskin Ice Dragon to be a regiment of renown. And I'd love some sort of different breath attack, one that can maybe uh, can it be enabled on the ground and there's a cone right in front, which would really be awesome. But you kind of have to balance it out with the dragons themselves already being so strong in the high elf army and people kind of cheesing right now um taking two three dragons in a build and you're like okay well how the hell am i going to kill this imagine two of those dragons being you know stuck standard of definition then you got this uh red wrench around manath near coming in with frenzy just ripping through your line so i i forgive i'm sorry for talking about such a horribly op beast but i think that it does have to happen one way or another but let's let's talk about let's change the subject here. Let's move to a unit that does not exist, but might even exist by the time this video comes out. But probably not. But but maybe even so, I'm not really sure. Creative Assemblies released like five things in the past four hours. It's ridiculous. But Shadow Warriors are the much coveted skirmishers that the High Elves need and deserve. You know your answer to Shades and their counterpart. These you know stalkers shall hunt all sorts of Dark Elves. Now, the Grey are one of the named regiments of renown from the Heraldry book, and their history isn't anything overly in-depth, but it's it's rather cool, you know, essentially, they are from an elf house of nobles that sided with Malekith during the Sundering. Then afterward, after the, the great High Elf, Dark Elf Civil War, they spent the entire five millennia after that point killing Dark Elves in droves to try and earn and redeem their uh, forsaken honor. So, you know, Really just overall badasses here. And it's really hard to double speculate, but the Shadow Warriors aren't known for their great many poisons or their magical bows that twist around corners, but they are known for being able to pick out the weaknesses and, po and uh, points in armor that are the most vulnerable. So maybe a Sunder Armor characteristic here would be very, very threatening from a unit with stock. Think Rusty R's again, but not disgusting goblins. And I know we said Sunder Armor earlier, but with Norska coming back in May, I think we could stand to see more Sundering back in the game. You know, Famir, you're definitely missed. And with the amount of heavy armor um, and heavily armored units in this new expansion, sp sparing the Skaven, of, of course, um, it's not something that would be uh, uh, definitely missed. Or, or I'm sorry, definitely um, too OP because you, you need a lot of that for what we're dealing with with any kind of high elf elite unit any kind of dark elf all the, the uh, lizardmen big dinosaurs so there's plenty of chances where center armor can can come into a somewhat of a balancing uh perspective but enough enough of that sappy shit about the the famir Let, let's jump to the silver pelts a renowned regiment of white lions now we're really out of the famed regiments of renowns that are in the current timeline, but that's okay. Like I said, the end times gives us plenty of really rad, but ultimately throwaway regiments. I mean, they they just they show them in one page, and the next page they kill them off. It's kind of a heartache. But the silver pelts are pretty amazing for that same reason. In the lore of the end times, uh, Trace gets burnt to a crisp by demons that invade, and the silver pelts are at the time uh, had made a vow to defend the Eagle Gate or die trying. Um, the governing prince gave them leave to go help their besieged homeland as the Silver Pelts were renowned for their ability to hunt and kill demons. Being the badasses that they are, they refused, saying that to abandon their oath is to be more of a disgrace to their homeland than not going back. The rest of the time they sang these kind of deep growling songs of remembrance as they looked on toward their burning homeland. And I think of the, the dwarfs in the opening of the hobby, you know, that, that Misty Mountains cold song, like that's exactly what I think of, but maybe not by dwarves. So that leaves, what, what, would, what would these guys really have ability-wise? Well, if they're famed at hunting demons, then I'd say that they have an anti-large characteristic. A characteristic I would have thought that the vanilla white lions would have had, to be honest, but that's something here or there. Um, then maybe magic attacks on top of that already devastating AP. So these guys are going to be like heavily armored slayers, hunting and hacking their way through large targets. Now, since we're talking about white lions, I'm going to go out on a total limb here and say that the possible regiment renown for the Ithilmar chariot is the white lion chariot. Now, this is totally a stab in the dark. I just really want to talk about the white lion chariot. 
there's I, I can't really think of a really good Ithlamar chariot regiment renown. I just really like this chariot. It's the coolest damn thing. But this is the kind of mighty chariot from the region of Trace. You know, it's operated by white by white lions and pulled by white lions. And and one is the animal, the other is the name of the unit. So don't think you've got a super intelligent lion driving a chariot. We'd be in a whole world of hurt if that were the case. But we cover the lore for them in their entry in our High Elf Army video, which will be linked at the end of this video as well. But what would these guys look like on paper? That's a real question, right? Well, I'm thinking about the, along the lines of a gore beast chariot. In the tabletop, the white lion chariot had more toughness, it hit harder, and overall was a much stronger chariot for the high elves. Um, it was able to take a much stronger, it was able to make much stronger charges. So I'd be looking at something with maybe an anti-large characteristic to play off of uh, lions raking down huge beasts or an AP falling in light with the chariot as a whole. Um, but maybe even a high weapon strength or a charge bonus. It, it, it has to be slightly lower than slower than an, an Ithilmar chariot, though. So you're not going to have um, this huge this lion just charging through the battlefield all over the place. You're going to have to swap speed for outright killing power. But a worthy swap for most. Now um, <clears throat> there are other things that we could they could be throwing on here. Um, it might it'd be really cool if they had like a Caltrops ability where it could just drop something that slows something behind it. But maybe that's me just watching too many James Bond movies. But I don't know. I think it'd be really cool to have a little bit more flavor to this. But uh, we've gone into the White Lions, but we might as well go into the other two elite units of the High Elves. And really the last two on this list for the most part. And the Swordmasters of Hoeth uh, were a staple in my tabletop army of old, you know, dropping a Razor Standard and, and Occam's Mine Razor on them made for some glorious knife through butter scenarios when fighting against ogres. But what would a Regiments of Renown Swordmasters unit look like? Well, the Blades of Hoeth have the history, have this history in the end times that's all wrapped up with the Dark Elves, actually. Their, their lore master, uh, Karanath, fell to the temptations of Marathi and walked a, a path away from the shining light of Safri. And as we know, the Swordmasters are bound by duty to the Tower of Hoeth and their lore masters, so they willingly followed him down the steps of insanity. Now, how can we look at this from a stat standpoint? Uh, maybe magical attacks? You know, something where these fighters are steeped in a bit of the dark magic that their lore master has gotten into. Or maybe just a bit of lore where their swords have magic from the Tower of Hoeth imbued into the blades. And that would be nifty. But you could even have something as simple as an increase in their range defense as they are more elite and veteran soldiers. So maybe they're able to deflect arrows far better than their younger peers. Um, and younger being an operative word here. You could even have something like another aura effect on them, which would be pretty fun. It's hard to really say how Swordmaster Regiments of Renown will be kitted out because they do their job already so well. But with all that being said, we should just move on to our Phoenix Guard and our last unit. And I unfortunately don't have any one remarkable unit of Phoenix Guard to go on. Um, in the end times even, they've got like the Eternity Guard and they've got the Flaming Guard. The Flaming Guard are... The Phoenix Guard and the Black Guard of Nagaron put together. The Eternity Guard are the Phoenix Guard, the Black Guard of Nagaron, and the Wildwood Rangers put together. Um, it's really kind of a cool dynamic. Um, it's, it's really kind of cool too, like uh, the names from to the Eternity Guard, the Eternity King, the, he's the king of all of the elves. Um, the Blackfire Guard, I think it was, I think that's what it was actually called, is when it's Phoenix, uh, the, the Phoenix Guard and the Black Black Art of Nagaron, just kind of a really cool naming uh, mechanic behind them. But a purely speculative and made up one would maybe be uh, Caradrian's Phoenix Guard, uh, a unit that serves or served directly under Caradrian himself. You know, he's the captain of the Phoenix Guard we've talked about. So they, being a more elite and even, even more blessed unit, uh, maybe their ward save could be higher. Maybe their halberds are steeped in flames, able to deliver judgment to all manner of foes. It'd be interesting to see their fear kind of upped to terror as well, or maybe even an aura of leadership around them as the, as the elves are inspired to fight harder knowing that the Eye of Assyrian is upon them. So the, the, that's why I'm, I'm struggling so much with the Swordmasters and the Phoenix Guard, because they're already such strong, versatile units, especially the Phoenix Guard. I mean, you, they're like probably point for point the best um, just single unit of infantry in the game that can output tons of damage, take a considerable amount of damage and has a ward save. Like there's just so much value in, in the Phoenix Guard. I love them so much, love them so much. But that really brings things to a close here today, guys. Uh, 
We've definitely left some units out, left some on the table, but I wanted to cover the ones that I think are either most likely or my favorites, as I've said. But you could even have uh, Caradrian's Phoenix, like I was talking about, Ashtari as a possible regiment of renowned Frostheart Phoenix. And there are all of the very, very old uh, mid to late 80s regiments of renowned elves as well. You know, the Elven, I'm sorry, the Lothern Elf City Guard or Elwing's Cavalry. Uh, the former actually has the uh, proto White Lions used as musicians, like all the, all the, uh, the Lothern Elf City Guard musicians have the uh, lion pelts on them. And uh, the former, the, the Elwing's Cavalry, are the first real form of the Illyrian Reavers in the Elf Codex. And back then, they weren't dark, High Elves, Dark Elves, and Wood Elves. They were just Elves. Elves. Um, they did add Bugmans into the game. We got Bugmans Rangers. But Bugmans Rangers uh, had a bit of a, a meme side culture to him for years within the Warhammer world. So I, I'm trying not... I, we, we've already seen... Uh, the Wood Elves of Orion, we've seen the Knights of Eregio, we've seen the Knights of the Cleansing Flame. So they, they definitely know about those units. They definitely have pulled from those units. Um, but we'll kind of see what happens here with those regiments that are now coming out. I, I believe they're coming out at the end of this month, beginning of next month. But as we work on the other regiments now, you can expect units, you know, like Mangle Manhines, uh, Dark Elf Company, and, and the lot. So, so plenty more to come. So if you guys enjoyed this video in this format, please let me know in the comments section. Uh, we can do the other races that I've yet to do get their own uh, regiments renowned for more speculative goodness. It's always fun to kind of see how right or just how completely wrong I am when the full release rolls out. So I'm more than happy to do these kind of purely speculative, just have fun videos. But thanks for joining me here today, guys. Don't forget to like the video. Have a good one and take care.